Aha. I just was told that uh, that my <laughs> always something seems to go wrong, right? So I always forget to turn on my uh, turn um, my mic on mute. And uh, this time around, um, uh, oh yeah, you know, I turned it off. I did turn it on mute, but I, I turned it back on again. Anyway, oh well, that's been done. The show must go on. So let me go back to the start again. Okay, so first of all, welcome everybody to this live event. And uh, I do apologize about the audio thing. Um, if, you've, if you've been here before, well, welcome back. If you haven't been here before, then a welcome to your first event. And I'll kind of give you a rundown of what's going to go on. Do a little bit of a... Um, uh, an introduction and then we'll go right into me talking about a project and hopefully you'll leave here with some tips and tricks maybe some good ideas for your next project and even some files that you can go back and maybe cut on your own or make your own which is great so I'm here live in front of you I'm gonna go over the project live and in the chat room is Rebecca or Becky as you guys know her and I I call her Rebecca, so I will call her Rebecca by mistake. But anyway, Becky's there to help answer any questions that you might have along the way. Um, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go into now a little bit of uh, sort of what's going on here in the UK and what we're doing, and uh, then we'll get right into the project. So as you can see, I'm out in my conservatory, and typically I would be turned around the other way, uh, and I would have a little bit of shade on my monitors. But unfortunately, uh, I've turned around. Um, and to make better use of the space, but also, but the sun comes in on my monitor. So um, if I have a misclick along the way, please accept my apologies, because sometimes when the sun comes out, I can't see my mouse. But anyway, that might happen. So I apologize ahead of time for that. Um, as you can see, um, we're all still working from home. Here in the UK, they are slowly easing the restrictions that we have with lockdown, which is, which is great. You can get out to the uh, supermarkets as long as you wear a mask. You can get out to the pubs, restaurants, and so on, as long as you um, reserve a table and so on through their online apps and whatnot. Uh, and it's working out you know, pretty good. So far, we've, we've been able to, to work from home really, really well as a vector team, supporting you guys and continuing to, to create great content for you. Um, to start off with, I want to remind you all, and you probably already know this, that the our first um, worldwide user group meeting is going to be happening online. Unfortunately, we had to postpone our San Diego user group to 2021. So this year we decided in its place to do an online event, which is going to happen on September the 24th, 25th, and 26th. Um, keep an eye on the website. You can sign up now for the actual event. And in doing so, of course, you'll you'll know when things are going to happen and what will be going on. Now, if you are, obviously you guys all have Vectric software, then you should know that there is a new version of the software out 10.5. It is a full install, so you're going to want to jump into your VNCO account and download the full installer and install that from there. Lots of great new features in there that you might want to check out. And we're going to focus or look at one of those today to help us build the project that we're going to be talking about for the next probably 45 minutes or an hour. So I um, hope you guys are ready. So let's talk about this project a little bit. So if you guys know me, um, I'm a runner. I like to run. Typically I run early in the morning um, before a lot of people are out and around. Um, since lockdown, it's been a little later, kind of sleeping in a bit, taking advantage of that time. But before lockdown happened, um, I was out running one day, running along, and I came to a T in the road. And right in front of me, somebody had their blinds pulled open and inside their front room was a beautiful, tall, wooden, um, extra large desk lamp. Uh, well, it's something like this, I guess I, I should show this. Um, looks like this, except for it had a nice wooden shade on it and it had like wooden cogs and so on and stuff. It looked really nice. And I thought to myself as I was going by that this would be perfect to make. Um, at the time, I thought, well, we'd be able to use some threaded rod and some things, some bolts and nuts, and then we could make it all work. But something I wanted to think of, so about three weeks ago, when I was asked to come up with a plan for a project for this week or for today, um, I thought this would be perfect. And I could use one of the new features in version 10.5 to make this happen and make it happen in a really slick way. So what we're going to be using today is thread milling, and it is new to version 10.5. 
Um, and for full disclosure with you guys, um, this is the first time I've used it. Uh, I saw Rebecca do hers and uh, it worked out really well for her, but this is the first time I've actually done it on my own. So I followed this wonderful thread milling toolpath guide that Rebecca put together. Um, it helped tremendously in me understanding how thread milling worked and how to set up my files. Of course, it's a guide, so it takes you from, from knowing pretty much absolutely nothing all the way to understanding how it works. Um, I would really suggest that you have a watch of this. Of course, Rebecca's in the chat room to answer any questions you have, but I think a lot of your questions about thread milling will be answered in this video. So definitely, there's a link below for this um, in the YouTube description. So I definitely would, would take the time, I think it's about a 40 minute video, but certainly I'd take the time to watch that if you're interested in thread milling. Um, again, invaluable resource for getting started with this. Um, so I'll leave it at that, but oh yeah, and I'm not gonna get too much into the details of what she covers in that. That is a broad scoping video about thread milling, you know, all of it. And what we're gonna focus on in this particular project is what I use to make my project work. Okay, so again, I might leave some question unanswered. Of course, feel free to answer, ask them, but they'll probably be answered in this guide as well, okay? Really top drawer job on Rebecca's uh, work on this one. So let's now go on to talking about my, um, my design, okay? So as always, and as you guys know, if you've been here before, I like to start off with the sketches, the actual sketch that I had drawn up. I wanted to figure out how my armature was going to work out. I knew that I wanted to have um, two large pieces and two small pieces, and obviously it in a base. And so that's where this idea came from. I needed to build a shade. I wanted to focus pretty much on the idea of uh, profile cuts and the molding tool path, which is what this turned out to be. And also I had to plan to have part of the armature stick up inside of the shade. I needed a base. Uh, and the base had to have a spot to put the armature into, and I decided that I was going to do dog bone fillets to make it fit. And this is the tricky bit, is the coming up with a way to use thread milling to hold together the armature at the joints. Now, I knew that my material thickness, I needed the nut or the, the, the post, the thread post to be longer than my total thickness of material. In order to do that, I needed to have a three-part assembly for my post and the nuts. So here you go, right here, you can see the top of that drawing is the actual nut that twists on to the threaded post. The post is gonna be made out of a different material than the nuts or the, or the post cap, we'll call it, that goes on the bottom of the post. And I decided that it'd be smart if I ended up making the end of that post sort of a, an interesting shape so it would glue in nice and tight into that cap and also, if you were turning it and putting force on it, you wouldn't break the bond of glue. At least that was kind of what I was thinking. Anyway, so we'll see how it went off in the end. Now to do this, I didn't have, it was important, excuse me, that I had the materials that um, I needed. Like I, I needed the materials so I knew the thickness and so on. So I went off to our local B&Q, which is like your um, Home Depot uh, in the US. Um, picked up some um, laminated pine and I picked up a piece of wood that I thought might come in handy. Didn't in the end, but I thought I'd pick it up anyway, just in case. Then I need to know what bits I was gonna use. So in this case, I'm gonna use a quarter inch end mill, a quarter inch ball nose end mill, and then a, um, a single point uh, thread milling tool, which you can see there on the right. And here are the specs for that. And I'm hoping that, uh, although this is the right one and Rebecca has the links for those that you might wanna, you could probably see if you'd like to and uh, see if you can source them out locally. We have both the UK link and a uh, US link for you if you'd like those. Um, and it came with all the information that we needed for that particular um, cut. And the last, or, what, or the second to the last thing we needed was some dowels. Now I, I had these, I got them. I didn't know whether I'd use them or not. I'm a fan of dowels. I thought I better have a bag just in case I need them. So these are six mil, um, six millimeter diameter dowels and uh, they're about a quarter inch. And so I could use those to kind of fit things together and glue things up and so on. So that was good to have as well. 
the last thing I needed was, of course, um, a light. And um, I was hoping that I could actually wire up a proper light in there. I like the idea of the wire kind of going down the armature and so on, but I'm not that great at electrics. So I thought that might be an unsafe thing to do. Along with, I can't teach you guys how to do that. You guys probably know how to do it. So if you wanted to replace what I came up with with that, go for it. But I searched Amazon and found these little puck lights. The great thing about this was that I needed dimensions. I didn't have them in my hands. I have the dimensions there. It came with a little bit of a remote. So that was nice. So I could use the remote if I need to turn it on and off with. Along with, you can push the face of it and it comes on and off. Little did I know it comes in a pack of six with two remotes and they all turn on and off with the same remote. So unless you want them all on or off at the same time, it's kind of a silly thing. But anyway, it was pretty inexpensive. I think it was like 15 pounds for the set of six, which is probably about I don't know, 20, 25 US dollars, which isn't that bad at all for, for what we have here in the end. Now, it was important with this project because like I had said, um, I had never done thread milling before was to actually cut a prototype. Um, again, I relied heavily on Rebecca's video for that. So I understood what was going on along with, we only have three thread milling tools available to us. One multi-thread tool and two single thread tools and the other thread tool is really tiny and so I couldn't use it. So I saw that Rebecca had success with her settings. So I felt that, hey, it worked for her. It's gonna work for me, I think in the end. Actually, I think she told me that, that as long as I used her settings, I was gonna be safe. There you go. So let's start off with um, my setup. So I have the two different pieces of material. Now this is the prototype, okay? Um, you're gonna see some strange things about my prototype. One is right in the middle of the board, just up above the three uh, nuts on the, uh, yeah, you'll see it there, it's the hole. Um, that was my first attempt at creating the internal thread. So here's how it works. I've got my props here, you guys know I like props. I've got a glass and the thread milling tool. If you've never seen one before, it's right there. It's a pretty interesting looking thing. It's pretty cool. So the first thing you do is you pocket out a hole. And this is my pocketed out hole. Your tool comes over, drops down into the pocket, and then goes around the edge of that and cuts in the threads. Okay, the threads are kind of outside of that pocket in the sidewalls of your, of your, um, your pocket, right? So down it goes to the bottom. Well, with my job, I wanted my post, my threaded post that holds the armature together to be as small as possible. I didn't want this to be a big, huge thing. And so I decided that I would just make my post the size uh, or the post hole the size of the end of this um, thread milling tool. So three quarters of an inch. And the way it works is in the software, you create the hole that you want to create. Then you create an offset and that offset is the pocket. Well, I started out with a quarter inch hole, three quarter inch hole, excuse me. And I pocket and, and I offset it in. And then I use that offset. And I'm sure if you follow the logic there, the hole that this plunged into was smaller than it should have been. Luckily, this has got some cutting edges on the bottom. So it just near did its thing and made its threads and pop back out again like a champion but it wasn't the right size and didn't look right and was very unsafe. So I stopped what I was doing, went back to the software and I'll show you later how I figured out what size hole I needed to make. So the offset was the proper size for this particular tool. And then I continued on. But obviously with that fix came a lot of other problems. I had to fix some other parts that I had already cut. So the way I was cutting this was the top part of that pine board are the parts for the actual lamp. They cut, cut first. So I had the armature already cut with what I thought, the three quarter inch hole in there. And then at this end of it, I've got the nuts and the nut caps and the top bit I've got the, on the other piece of wood that you see there is the, um, the actual threaded posts. So I had to go back and recut the holes in the armatures. That's the very top of the board. As you can see, it looks a little funny up there. Um, my tabs were a bit thin. They managed to hold together while I was cutting out the actual armature, which was great, but then they got a little loose and they wouldn't be strong enough for me to go back in and pocket out those holes again, no matter what I did. So I used some double-sided tape, stuck it down on top of that, and that held them in there super secure. Uh, I was really confident they weren't going to move. 
and they didn't move, I went back and made those holes a bit bigger. So there you go. Um, that's my first two mistakes I made. Here we go. There's nothing more satisfying than this. Threading in your first yeah. thing, the hole the first time and it worked. It was fantastic. It really worked really, really well. So I knew that my settings were right. Just the dimension was slightly wrong. Everything worked together perfect. Well, almost perfect. Here's the last part. I test fitted my armature together and you'll see at the bottom of my armature there on the right hand side, it cracked. It cracked along the grain of the wood right there because I didn't make the whole, I made it exactly the size I needed it to be, not any bigger. And so um, I was kind of hoping that I wouldn't have to worry about that. But anyway, I did. So I needed to fix that later on. But the whole process worked. Took the bits home to my backyard, sanded them all down, glued them up, and it turned out pretty good, as you can see here. I was really happy with the overall design. The things that I wanted to change that were visual were the size of the nuts were a little bit big, I thought, for the design. Um, during the assembly, of course, I ran into a couple other little problems that I had to fix. For instance, putting the base, the armature into the base, I needed to whittle away some of the wood on the actual insert to make it fit. But once I got that all fixed up, it looks really good and it fits together really quite nice. So I was quite proud of that. So as you can see, the benefits of me making a prototype to start with were, were really, you know, were paid off amazingly because I got a chance to actually look over my work that I had done and correct it. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the files that you're going to receive with this project if you choose to download it. Um, these are sort of, um, they, they're a hybrid of what, of a perfect file. So you've got partly my original drawings that I work from so I can show you what I was thinking. And then you have the actual files that I use to cut the real one with in the end. So keep that in mind. So if you're comparing the, the drawings that are off to the left of the job space, they don't quite match up. That's because I had made some changes to get the to get it finished up properly. Um, of course, thread milling is, I've already said, it's a pretty neat feature. It's pretty amazing. But it's available in Cut 2D, um, Pro, and Desktop. So Cut 2D Pro, Cut 2D Desktop, VCarve Pro, VCarve Desktop, and Aspire. Um, so this these files will work perfectly in uh, VCarve Desktop and Pro and Aspire. Um, if you you can open up and cut 2D, except for you can't use the molding tool path that I used. Sorry. So, um, but you could, you know, still cut this, I guess, with a few little edits if you wanted to. Okay. So let me just grab a drink of water and uh, we'll have a look at the software. Okay, don't worry. I didn't shut off my volume. I just had a quick drink there so that you, um, so that we would, I wouldn't be so dry. Anyway, okay, so here we go. We're going to take a look at the three files that you're going to get with the actual project. We'll work through them one at a time, and um, I'll point out all the high points that I think are important for you to know how I got the results that I did. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into, again, the, the, the overall thread milling idea, just what I needed to make this project work, and also uh, some of the features of the software I'm gonna, just going to fly over because you guys should know how to draw lines and circles and stuff like that. And if you don't, then there's lots of stuff on the support site that can cover all those different things, okay? So let's go ahead and open a new, oh, sorry, wrong button, I'll be starting off on the wrong foot. Let's open up an existing file. And here are the three files that you're gonna get. You're gonna get the desk lamp, um, shade and base. It's obvious what that is. You're gonna get the lamp, uh, the desk, sorry, the desk lamp nuts, which are just the threaded nuts. And you're also gonna get the, oh, threaded nuts, excuse me, and also the, the uh, post cap, okay? and then you're gonna get the actual post file. I broke them up into three different files just because this was my particular workflow. I probably could have combined them all into one, but also I wanted it to fit for desktop users as well, okay? Let's open up the arms, shade, and base file. As always, you're gonna be presented with these notes. Please read and understand them before you start. Make sure you test or look at all the tooling to make sure it's set up safe and appropriate for your machine and your setup, okay? So please do that every time. So right off the bat, I'm going to look at my material. 
I'm in the UK, so all of our material is measured in millimeters. So what I did was I set up my job with material with millimeter units, and then I switched it over to inches. So I would get these semi-odd thickness numbers for you guys with inches. So um, you know the thickness is 0 0.7087. So I ended up most of the time just referring to that to 0.71. Okay, in case you're wondering, so that's why we have those funny numbers there. That's 18 millimeters, by the way, if you're interested. Um, and because we're, um, you could use any setting here. You don't need to use very high. I just happen to use that because I'm, I'm used to that, but you can use any of these settings. We're not using any 3D content, so that's fine. And you can just click okay. Um, and we're gonna recalculate all my tooling, I bet you. No, I guess not, okay, good stuff. So here is my drawing that I made to help me understand how I want this lamp to go together. And as you know, all know, I like doing these drawings. Um, it really does help me a lot understand how things are gonna fit together. Again, these drawing, this drawing was made um, post or, or pre the changes that I made to make this lamp actually work. So keep that in mind, okay? These are just sort of to get you started and to understand my thought process more than anything. So here's the armature. Look at the armature first. You have the actual armature that fits together here. These are just grouped together. There's the two middle parts, which are six inches long by 1.25 inches wide. Okay, and, that's, and then you have these two end bits here that are the same. They're just one of these armature bits cut in half. So you get half at the top and half at the bottom. I included this drawing in here so that you would have a sense of how I actually came up with this drawing and I'm going to redraw it right next to it so you know what I did um, but I wanted this here for you guys to have on hand in the file so you can be reminded of how I did it and what my thought process was. So as I had said the original hole in the arm was three quarters of an inch so if I select that vector and press T on my keyboard you'll see that this is the original diameter hole it's not the one that I ended up cutting okay keep that in mind it's the original diameter hole Okay, the whole part here, this whole one piece of armature is going to be one and a quarter by six inches tall. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's just go ahead and redraw that. So let's draw a box. We are going to have square corners and we'll make it, like I had said, um, 1.25 by six inches tall. We'll apply that. And now I could go in and um, use a circle to crop off the edges of this or the corners. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it even easier. I'm going to use my radius, those corners for me, and I'm going to put in the 1.25 and I'm going to divide that by two and press equals. And again, any, any field that you have um, in your software, you can, that, that accepts numbers, you can do math in. So press equals So 0.625. And if I hit apply, You'll see what I have is those nice rounded corners like I'd have to. And one of the other neat new features, if you don't like that, you can just pull those little green handles out and look at that. And if you overextend them, they become inside radiuses. But that's perfect. So we're going to go with that. It's wonderful. Let's go ahead and make our circle for our hole. So I want to make this a quarter inch. We're just going to go ahead and click in the center. You'll see that because I have my snapping turned on, if I go in my smart snapping turned on, if I go into this area and I click, it's going to lock onto that center so I can just drop in a couple circles where they belong and then I'm ready to go with that. Now also what I want to do is I need to create this inside part. So th between this inside part and the top of this, this area in here is going to be cut down half the depth or half the thickness of my material. So I need to have this nice interesting shape here. So to do that, we're going to take this and we are going to press T on the keyboard and we're going to change this to be, uh, we're going to go, sorry, we're going to make a copy of those first. Control C, Control V, press T on the keyboard and then we're going to go ahead and make this 1.25. Oh, hit apply and then we'll close that down. Now I'm just going to take this, and if I grab it from the center, hold down my Alt key, I can drag it straight down, hold down my Control key, it'll make a copy of it, it'll snap the center of that circle down there. Then there we have it, the two circles that I'm going to need. Now, because I wanted this inside bit to not rub on my armature, I actually want to offset this vector outwards so I can crop this shape just a wee bit so that my arm will travel in there without catching up on anything. So let's take this, these two here, hold down my shift key and grab both of those and we'll offset that out. 0 0.05 an inch, that's perfect. Outwards offset, we'll close that down. 
Now what I can do is I can use these two vectors to, to give me or to help me make the inside bit of this. So I'm going to grab this outside vector that we have. And I'm going to make a copy of it. Control C, Control V. I'm going to select it first and then I'm going to select this circle. Oh, sorry. Select this first and hold down my shift key and grab this circle. With my shift key held down, if I use the subtract feature, I'll be left with both the result and the original subtraction vector I had, which is kind of important and nice to know. Let's do the same with the bottom part here. Holding down my shift key, we'll do the same. And there we have it. Okay. Now, I really don't need these circles anymore, so we're going to delete those out of there. And all I want to do now is just radius the corner of these. I could leave these sharp, and I could cut this perfectly. They would come out nice and sharp. But I felt that over time, these points would wear off, and then I wouldn't be able to actually... They would just look ratty in the end. So using the radius tool, or the fillet tool, I'm going to radius those a bit. Using one half of the diameter of my end mill. So my end mill is going to be a quarter inch end mill, so 0.125 is half of that. And I can just go in and using a regular fillet, just kind of fillet those a little bit. Like that, let's close that down. Now look at that, that was pretty easy to do and there was the arm that we need. Now let's make sure that it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of those vectors and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go ahead and group those together. So now I have a group of those. Now let's make a copy of those. So I'm gonna Grab it from here, hold down my control and alt key again and drag straight up. It'll snap to that middle circle, let go, and now I have it. Now this is one of my favorite things to do. I really get a lot of satisfaction out of this. If I click on the center of that, I'll bring up my rotation anchor. So if I drag that down to the center of this circle, I can go ahead and now rotate this using this handle and you'll see what happens. I'm simulating the rotation of that as long as I have a nut, or sorry, a post in there to keep that rotating. And I can go ahead and bend that down and see what kind of angle I can get before I bottom out here. And that's pretty close. So I was pretty happy with that angle.
Okay. Yeah, well, we might back. Can you hear me okay? Let's see. Hey, let's see what happens. That is back. Yeah! Good stuff. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now I have no idea where I left off. So at what point did you guys maybe lose audio? Could somebody give me a bit of a bit of a, a, a nudge on where I, where I got left off here? Anybody know where I left off? Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Kurt. Yes, well done. Well done. Paying attention too. Love it. Okay, here we go. So I left off the at the point that I was doing the. Um, I have no idea what happened there. Sorry about that. Left off at the point that I was showing you the animation. So that's good. Um, not the animation, but the little twisty thing. So if I lose audio again, I know you guys at Vectric are keeping me on tab. So thank you for that. So let's take a look at this in the end. Um, so we have my drawing, like I had said, okay, at the top, we're going to take a look at the actual um, shade that I was making. Um, so we what I wanted to do with the shade was I knew the thickness of these needed to be the 18 mil, the thickness of the material that I happened to have. I also wanted them to look a little nicer, so I thought if I used the molding toolpath, the radius, the top edge of some of these parts, that would look really kind of neat. Um, I also thought I needed a way to actually assemble these all together, and like I said, I had that pack of dowels, so that was a perfect way of doing that, putting these dowels all together here in the middle so I could actually go ahead and center everything up properly. But I knew that these two parts here would actually be cut all the way through. So in order to actually get this piece centered on there, I thought if I pocketed out a little spot here and there, then I could actually have a little lip this would actually insert into. Now, at this point, I did have those, like I said, I had the right light, so I could go ahead now and figure out how the light should fit in there. And that worked out pretty neat as well in the end. I think that's all I wanted to point out with this particular drawing there. That's great. Okay, so let's now take a look at the actual tooling for this. Okay, we're going to leave the concept design on. We'll turn on layer one, and then we'll see the actual vectors that we use the tool with. So let's start at the bottom. Okay, at the bottom of this um, are the actual armatures. You'll see that I've got this vector here that I offset it outwards, the thickness of my tool that I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. That way I could actually um, pocket out between these two lines halfway down and then I could also use this vector here to go ahead and make my profile cut to cut those out. These again are just halves of one of these so there's two halves and one goes into the base and one goes into the top of the shape. This is the actual base so we're going to use this line here as my molding tool path and then this here is just a rectangle that I used the dog bone fillets for to make these little fillets here so that um, we could um, so that they would fit in nice and tight without the sharp corners being without the rounded corners excuse me being in the way now some of you guys are going to say well did you not offset that outward to give it some allowance and yes I do that in my actual tool paths I felt that was an easier way to do it that way I'd have more control with that in the end okay, the top part of this board is the same thing these two circles here are these two parts here. We're going to use this vector here to create that lip that I was talking about. Sorry, this vector here, we're going to create the lip. And these vectors here on the inside are actually to cut out the center of those. So you get a couple of nice little round hockey pucks. And off you go. These ones here are the rest of the shade. We've got the molding tool paths. We've got the holes for the actual um, dowel to fit in. And the only part that I didn't use an allowance for is this part right here, these, this insert. Now, the total combination of both thicknesses of these two circles, the material, was wider than the uh, one and a quarter inch um, 
arm that you're going to glue up into there, okay? So you're going to have a little air on each end, the far end, like to the front of the shade and to the back of the shade. But I thought that was okay because um, I wanted a little bit of wiggle room in there to make sure everything fit in nicely. Now, I couldn't use the offset, so I actually had to, because if I had done that, then I would have used, sorry, allowance, I would have used, um, I would have taken the allowance off this whole vector. I didn't want to do that, so I actually offset this line here out the same distance that I would have probably done the allowance for and then used it to actually um, subtract out that shape from that circle so I had the position that I needed. Now let's have a look at the actual tool paths for this, okay? And we'll go ahead and tile our views. Just keep checking the audio here to make sure everything is okay. Perfect. Okay, so First of all, we start off with our molding toolpath. There's no magic here. The vector that I use for the molding toolpath right here, there's my profile. I added this bit of a line at the bottom so that I get a nice clean bottom here, which worked out nicely. And if we just go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. Again, I'm not gonna run through a molding toolpath. We have a wonderful video on the molding toolpath, a couple of them that you can watch and it'll explain it really, really well. But really all we wanted that for was to put this little edge treatment on there and I wanted to do it a fast and efficient way without any 3D models. So that worked out really, really well. Okay, the next one we're gonna look at is gonna be the arms, which are these pockets. Now you'll notice that in the 2D view, I've got the solid preview turned on. We're gonna need that later, but right now you'll see that it's gonna pocket it out perfectly for me. So if we preview that, this is simple pocketing. It's just going down half the depth of my material. So Z divided by two, doing some math right inside those fields, which is great. Um, Nothing fancy about this pocket toolpath at all. Offset tooling, and we're going to close that down and we'll preview that toolpath. You'll see that cleans those out quite nice. Wonderful. Let's look at the arm pocket here. Okay, that's going to be this little bit right here. And we're going to take a real close look at that toolpath because I had mentioned about that pocket allowance. So with that selected, if I look in my 2D view and I drag that down, we zoom in on that vector, you'll see that I'm actually gonna be cutting outside of that. So there's that extra allowance, and that's 0 0.01. It's a negative allowance, it makes the hole a bit bigger, okay? So let's just go ahead. Oh, and I'm only gonna go down a half inch on that, okay? So that's, that's perfect. And we'll close that down and we'll preview that tool path. There it is, wonderful. The shade lip, now if that was a bit confusing to you when I was talking about that, there is the shade lip. That's gonna be the part that will be slightly stepped down so that I can glue in this piece of my shade inside of that lip. There we are. And that's just gonna be a simple um, profile cut on the inside of that line, the full quarter inch of the tool. And we're gonna use a bit of an allowance offset there just so that it overcuts slightly. And let me tell you, that number was perfect. It fit in like a dream when it went together. I was really quite happy with that. And that's all good. Nothing else that's special down here. Close that down. Let's preview that tool path. And there we have it. Cuts down that lip nicely. Okay. The next one we're going to look at is going to be the arm holes, which are down here at the bottom. Now, again, I haven't disclosed how I figured out what the size of these are yet. Um, so, but I will tell you at this point is that they're 0.9 of an inch in diameter, but I also used a bit of a pocket allowance so that when my threaded post goes through there, I've got a little bit of wiggle room. And also I use a bit more of an allowance later on to make the post slightly smaller. So the combination of those two to make it fit in there quite nice. Okay, so there we are. So that's that and that's pretty basic. Oh yeah. so. Um, what I decided to do, to, because I didn't want to do a whole lot of air cutting down through, I already removed half of my material. My start depth is half my material, so at um, Z divided by 2. And then my cut depth is Z divided by 2 plus 0.2. So that's going to go down this depth plus a little extra to go into my spoil board, which I'm really not too worried about. And if we just go ahead and close that and we'll preview that, let's do that, we'll preview that. And there we have our holes right through our board. Just great. Dowel holes, no trick here, just the holes at the very top, quarter inch in diameter, going all the way through my material, plus a little tiny bit to make sure that I get a good 
get all the way through into my spoil board. It's going to take eight passes, but it works really quick. Really nothing fancy about that. Close that down. We'll preview that tooling. Oh, we better actually. There we have it. There are holes. And you'll see that those two there, I didn't actually do any molding toolpath to because those are these guys right here. And during the cutout pass, that's where the magic happens there. Okay. They get cut out. You'll see that we cut out on the inside of here. So you got these nice little hockey pucks left over for great crafts for the kids. And then you've got all your parts that you need. Let's take a look at that. Now, I had to, as I said in my original file when I ran my um, prototype, I needed to thicken up and make do, do a better job at my tabs. And so I did do that. I've made those adjustments here for you. Against basic profile cut, we're going down the thickness of my material plus a little bit using that quarter inch end mill, going outside those lines, adding in the tabs that we need. And with some of our new upgrades to where the software selects where it puts tabs, it does a really great job now of putting tabs where they belong or where you think they should go. So well done there. Let's close that down and then we'll preview that tool path. And there we have our first bits to make the actual shade and the armature. So that wasn't all that bad. Just a little bit of planning and uh, the use of the molding toolpath, which really in the end you don't really need to do if you don't want to, but um, it does work out pretty well in the end. And we accommodated all of the stuff we need to worry about with our allowances and so on. So that's great. So that's step number one. Now let's pick a new file. We're going to open up the lamp nuts. Now, the desk lamps. I started out with the nuts. I, I, I can't give you a good reason why I did. I just, I decided that it seemed like a good thing to start with. We'll start with those so I would get the whole proper to make the post with. It worked out for me. Um, and again, following Rebecca's um, file, I'm not sure what she, or video, I'm not sure what she did first, but um, definitely this worked out for me in the end for, for my particular project. So, Let's take a look at the nuts first and we'll open these up. Nope, don't need to save that. Again, make sure you read and understand what's here and make sure that you check it out um, and you make any changes you need for your setup to make it safe and appropriate for what you're doing, okay? Now, let's take a look at my drawing. Again, big fan of these little drawings off the side of my job so I can kind of visualize what's going on before I actually get into it. When you look at this particular um, drawing, I want you to note that it's not the proper size that the finish vectors are that you're using, okay? This distance here is not the, um, the same uh, diameter as the, the nut cover that you're going to use. It's not the same at all, so keep that in mind. This is just here solely for reference, okay? So here are the three parts we're going to make. We're going to make the actual nut, okay? The things that are important is we're going to thread right down to the bottom of that, the post, we're not going to thread all the way through that. We're only going to thread about halfway down. We don't need to go the rest of the way. I didn't think it was worthwhile, so we'll just leave that the way it is. And then, of course, we need this nut cap here, a post nut, we'll call it. And it needs to fit on to be glued on to the back of this so that we get a good, thick um, bolt through here. Now, one of the neat things about this is if I grab this and drag this over, you'll see that I actually am going to cut down deeper than I need to. That way, over time, if my softwood starts to get a little de depression here, I can tighten it a little bit more and I can, you know, it won't bottom out on me. So I thought that that was a good plan um, for myself in the end. Uh, in case you're wondering, these two bits here are actually the... Um, the cross section of the two armatures. Just wanted to make sure they were in there so I could tell how thick they were gonna be. So that is my plan. So these two bits here are gonna be made out of the pine that we have, and the center bit will be made out of the mystery wood that I don't know what is. I'm sure that you guys are all professional wood guys. You would know what it was, but I'm not really sure. I don't think it's oak. I don't think it's, I don't, I don't know what is this darker orangey or wood, who knows? Anyway, but I used it. It was the right thickness for what I needed. So let's pop up here and look at the other uh, layer that I've given you guys. And we'll start out by just going over what these vectors are, and then I'll explain how I came to getting them to mention that they are. So these are the outsides of the nuts. So these are actually going to be the internal threads in the center of these. 
This originally I was going to make the uh, the nut uh, one and a quarter inches. Uh, then I decided to go down to one and a half, which I thought was a better size. So this is one and three quarters tall, and this is only one and a half inches tall, and it still worked out well in the end. This is the um, the re the recess here for the actual um, post to be glued into. Um, I thought that if I made it a unique design, it might. It'd be fun, first of all, but also when it fit in there, any kind of pressure I put on it, it might not break out as easy if it was going to break out. It's, I don't think it would unless you really torqued it on there. And now these two, two circles in the center are going to be what we're going to use to make our internal threads. Okay, so let's have a look at those. So the way we're going to do this, I'm just going to bring up our, uh, first of all, I'm going to show you what I did wrong, and then I'll show you how I got to the right answer here. So we're going to draw a circle. That's going to be three quarters of an inch in diameter. Okay, close that down. And we'll bring up our thread milling toolpath operation here. And we'll click that. And we're just going to look mainly at this section right here in the middle. We're not going to worry about the top bit. I'll go over that in a minute. But this is the stuff that's, that's most important. Right? Um, as I said, at Vectric, we only have three thread milling tools on hand. We have one multi-thread tool and two single thread tools. And uh, the single, the, the other single one that I didn't use was really super tiny, so I didn't want to use it. But I wanted to maximize what I could get out of this one. So the way it works is you create what you want as an actual um, hole, and then you create the internal circle for the threads. And again, what happens is this ends up being, if I select this circle that I'm going to pocket out and I press T on my keyboard, it ends up being um, smaller than the diameter of my tool. So, here we go. What did I do to get that the right size? Um, I'm not a mathematician, and if, if I knew all of the, the, the trigonometry and so on that has to happen, or, or all the fancy math stuff, I'd be able to figure it out, probably. But my method for doing this was to actually do it through trial and error. So I took this circle. I knew 0.75 wasn't going to do the trick. So I point, put 0.85, okay, hit apply, changed my diameter over here to be 0.85 because it's changed, okay. And then I created my internal threads, took a look at that, and over here it says it's still shy of what I need. So let's delete that out of there. Grab this again. Let's up it a bit, bit more. And I like whole numbers because I do, apply there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 0.9, and I'm gonna create the internal circle, and if I select that, there you have it. I'm just a hair bigger than what I need to be. So I knew that my original vector had to be 0.9 of an inch in diameter. Okay, and that's how I figured out that. So if I close those down or delete those, let's close this. I have my original vector, which is the 0.9, and then I have the offset one that I created inside of my tooling to get those two different lines going on there. Just kind of make sure everything is okay up there. Everything look good. If somebody can just give me a nod, that would be great. I'd appreciate it. Um, okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual tooling that I created. So in the video that Rebecca does, um, she shows you to create the thread first, and then to create the pocket, and then just to slide them up in the reverse order. Remember, I've already done a prototype of this, so I know that my, my numbers work. I just need to make sure that I have the, the right diameter and so on. Cool. Thank you, Ollie, very much. So, I'm going to start off with the actual thread pocket. So, if we take a look at that. It's pretty basic. It's a pocket toolpath, nothing special at all, except for I'm going to go down 0.6 of an inch. So I'm not going to go all the way through my 0.71 inch material like I want to, okay? Like I don't want to. I don't want to go all the way through. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. <clears throat> nothing fancy about this at all. Just calculate that, and we're going to preview that visible toolpath, and we have these nice little pockets in there, which is great. Now let's take a look at the thread. We'll just Double click on that and let's talk a little bit about the threads. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top of my material, obviously. I'm going to go down to the bottom of my pocket, okay, which is 0.6 of an inch. It's going to figure out the thread length for me, so I don't need to worry about that, thank goodness. I'm going to use this single thread 
mill, the thread milling tool, which I showed you earlier. And these settings come directly from Rebecca's video. Okay, so all of these are same. The only thing I do want to point out, and she made a point to point it out in her video, is that the pass depth really isn't the pass depth. It's how far into the sidewall your tool is going to cut to create your threads. So that's just something to know. It's a good thing to have um, in the back of your head so you're not thinking that's how far the tool is going to drop. It's how far it's going to move left or right. Okay. So we're going to click. Oh, and all of these numbers came from the manufacturer of the tool. So we just copy those in there and off we go. Um, the pitch, so I quizzed Rebecca on where she had come up with her pitch and she, as always, had a really good answer for that. She wanted her post to be one inch in diameter, so she went down here and chose the very bottom here, the UTS standard one inch settings, and it ended up being the 0.125, so she just had to change her diameter to one inch and everything worked out for her. I, I didn't know that ahead of time, so what I did was I just copied her number in there and everything worked out well. But after I knew that, I thought I better check to see if I was remotely correct. So if I go down and choose the UTS three quarter inch, you'll see that my pitch should or could have been 0.1. I figured that 0.125 obviously didn't hurt it any because it worked out for me in the end. And if anything, it may have made my um, my actual fit a bit better, a little more loose so that the wood would work out properly in the end. Anyway, so I went with that. You might want to try to use the actual proper number if you'd like to, if you actually cut this with that tool, but this worked fine for me. I knew the diameter was going to be 0.9 of an inch. I didn't add any fit tolerance on my internal thread. I did that all on my external thread. Okay, this is an internal thread, as I've indicated there. And I chose to have a right-handed thread direction from top to bottom. And you need to mirror this in your external threads as well. So keep that in mind, okay, as you go. And we're gonna go ahead and calculate that. Now, right off the bat, I get an error. And this error is the possible thread distortion with selected tools. So I might get some possible thread distortion. I've like I said before, this was my first time running this sort of thing. And I assumed that it would be a proper do not do this if I shouldn't do this. And um, so I did it. I went okay. I used it the way it was. And I, as you saw in my test fit, I didn't see any distortion that I could tell of. And after speaking with uh, Stuart in our development team, he suggested that there may have been none, and if there was, it may have been a very little. And with all of the extra allowances I put in there, I probably wouldn't have noticed them at all. And this is wood, so you know, it, it may, it's pretty forgiving. So definitely, uh, it didn't affect my job any. Now, um, if you are worried about that, then of course you can work it out so you don't get this warning pop up. But um, it, it worked out fine for me. I just wanted to tell you that. So I just went ahead and clicked so we'll click OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to preview the tooling. But in this particular, the way that our software creates a 3D model, we can't properly represent threads. So, but what is good about this is that I see that I am creating threads. You can see that at the bottom of that hole. And I can check the depth. So if I look down here, right where my mouse is, you'll see that I'm going into my material 0.6 of an inch. So I know that I'm not going past, or not going any deeper than I wanted to go with my tool. So I felt that it was pretty safe to do. And there you go. That was what I got from that. Now let's just go ahead and do the rest of these tool paths. We have the post pockets, which is over here. And again, if we look at this, a very basic tool path. It's a pocket tool path going down the thickness of the lip that I'm gonna to add to the end of my post. It's 0.125. Um, I could have in the end gone a little bit deeper here that way uh, it may have got even a better fit than what I had but um, this worked out fine for me used a quarter inch end mill for that it's a raster tool path I gave a little bit of an allowance actually more allowance than I normally do I doubled what I normally put in there because I wanted it to fit in easily um, and I wanted to make sure that uh, I could glue it in without doing too much sanding because it was a bit fiddly to try to get all that stuff off there so just thought I'd let you know that 
And we'll go ahead and close that down and we'll preview that toolpath. There we have that, looks great. And then I have the two profile cuts here to cut these two parts out with. Uh, I don't know why I didn't put them into one toolpath. It must have been during my testing, I, I broke up into two, but these could have easily been put into the same toolpath without any problem. Take a look at that, they all have um, it's the same setup. So it's Z plus the 0 0.02, using that quarter inch end mill again, outside the line, adding in my tabs. Again, I thickened them up a little bit from my uh, original prototype. These might be a little too thick, but I'd rather them be thick than not. Okay, close that down and let's preview those tool paths. And off we go. And that's what we have. And you can see they do look pretty beefy, those tabs there, but they do hold it in place nice and safe, which is great. And I made these caps and nuts as small as I felt comfortable with. Um, if I had gotten any tighter, then I probably would have experienced some chipping. And to be honest, this one did chip right there a little bit. So I had to glue in some uh, wood and make it look all pretty in the end. But there you go. So that is the internal threads. Got those done. Let's close that. And let's go ahead and open up a the last file that we're going to look at, which is going to be our desk lamp posts. Open that up. Again, we're going to have the same warning pop up that we always do. Please make sure that you read and understand all this before you move ahead with this stuff. We want you to be safe. Definitely want you to be safe. We'll click OK. So here is my post file. Now, I want to point out here that one that I forgot to do. So you're going to get my error passed on to you, but it's not an error that's important, really. You don't use it. Um, and the second is the um, one of the uh, allowances that I added in that Rebecca suggested that we did in her video again and that was a great video I just want to tell you it was a really good video um, that helped me make my post a bit smaller than what it should be so it fit in a little bit better first of all these circles here are the size of the nut that's the only reason why they're here is to let me know what the size is unfortunately if I press T on my keyboard you'll see that they are set to their original size that's not the size they should be. They should be one and a half inches. But we don't use that vector for anything but visualization. So I feel okay with leaving that there for you, okay? Let's take a look at our tool paths for this one. And we'll go ahead and split our view here. Now keep in mind that this is a different material than I used before. This is actually 32 millimeter thick mystery wood don't know what it is, but it was really hard and dry. Um, and when I was cutting the post, it howled like crazy, but nothing went wrong. So I figured it was it was OK, um, but it was loud. Uh, that was when I was putting the threads in there. So the first thing we're going to look at is the post pockets. Now, we're going to pocket out between two vectors. Okay, We're going to pocket out between this vector and this outside vector. Now. If we take a look closely look at this vector, if I select this inside one and press T on my keyboard, it isn't 0.9, it's 0.88. The 0.9 is right here, and this is the original post size. So actually, I'm going to make my post slightly smaller than what I need. Again, one of the allowances that may have saved me from any problems with the distortion that, that I may have seen that I can't tell. Okay, so we're going to pocket out between those two lines. First of all, now you're going to ask me how far I need to pocket out. Well, I figured that out by actually creating the tooling for the threads first. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about that. This is my threads. So I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to go down 0.7 of an inch, which isn't, like I said a minute ago, the material is 1.2, I think, or 1.12 1, 1, inches thick once you convert it from millimeters. Um, so I'm not going to go, I'm not all the way down my post. I'm only going to go down partway down my post, and it tells me my thread length there. Use the same tool before, same settings as before, and I'm using that outside vector, not the offset one that I used, okay? And there is my fit tolerance. I told you I didn't use it on the internal thread, but I added it to the external thread, okay? Um, again, this is external, same settings as before, right-handed top to bottom, and then we're going to go ahead and calculate that. I'm going to get the same error. 
again, not error, the same warning that pops up. I'm going to click OK, and there we have it. Now you'll see, using that solid preview of my 2D tool path here, you can see that I drew a circle that was as big as my actual tool path. And in saying that, full disclosure for you guys, um, it is a little tiny right here. So what happens when your tool pulls out as it gets to the top of the hole, it does nick the side of this. It's okay, your, the tool that I was using has a cutting edge there, so it didn't do any damage. It just, just wanted to let you know that it was gonna do that. If you wanna adjust that, you can just offset that out a little bit and you'll be fine and don't need to worry about it, okay? And you'll see that in the video and I'll point that out in a minute. So we have that line. So let's go back and we're gonna preview the pocket first, okay? So let's pocket that. Again, we're just gonna go down Z minus the thickness of the, this little clover that I want left behind, and that clover, this little cross I want left behind, using that quarter inch end mill. And we are gonna go ahead and close that and we'll preview that. And you'll see that we're gonna cut those out. Again, so you guys know, this took the longest to cut, believe it or not, for me in my settings. Um, it took about 15 minutes a pocket to go through. I probably could have sped that up a little bit, but I was a little unsure of the material and so on, and it did the job nice and clean, so I didn't want to mess about with it too much. So it worked out really well, I think, in the end. Let's take a look and we'll preview our threading. Not much to see here. Again, we can't really show it in the software very well, but what you can take from this is that we're only putting threads a portion of the way down the actual post, okay? So you'll see that we're not going all the way to the bottom of the post. So that reassured me that that was gonna be okay. Let's close that down. And of course, the final thing is gonna be the cutouts. We're gonna cut out around this guy, that vector there. Oops, sorry. Got a little excited there. We'll preview that. And there we have the toolpath. I also thickened up these tabs from my prototype and added in two extras. I only had two to begin with. I added in a couple more to make it even fit any better. So that's that. Okay, so we have all the parts that we need. It really wasn't all that bad. And to be really fair, I have to say that, like I had said before, this was my first time cutting um, thread milling or doing anything with thread milling, and it worked out really well. Again, a lot to say about the dev team and also the video that I had to go by to help me out. So kudos to everybody. It worked out really, really well. So let's have a look now. Let's go into the labs and have a look at the video of it actually cutting, okay? So here we are, and I'm cutting to start with the molding tool path. Now, it's fast, it's fun to cut molding tool paths. Um, you get a nice clean cut. Unfortunately, the pine that we're using um, isn't, the, uh, isn't the best in the whole world, so uh, it did come out a bit fuzzy in the end. Had to do a bit of sanding in between, so Anthony, our videographer, a part of our marketing team, could get in there and he could get some good shots of that for you. We're gonna go ahead now and pocket out around the armatures, which is quite nice. Worked out really well, but the fuzzies were everywhere. So well, here's pocketing out in the base for the armature to stick into. Putting in the dowel holes, you didn't see the actual um, lip cut that we talked about, it didn't show up. Um, but that's, or, or the holes in the actual armatures. But here we are anyway, going along and cutting out the uh, profiles around the outside so we can remove the parts easily. Again, more sanding in between, which is okay. And here we are pocketing out the centers of the nuts. So this is gonna be for the internal threads. It's a basic pocket cut, nothing fancy. A little more sanding. And then in comes our thread milling tool and it's a treat to watch. It really does look really slick when it's cutting. It's quite nice, and I didn't hit the walls coming in or out. It worked out really, really well in the end. Here we are pocketing out the little recesses for the posts to be glued into. And then we're gonna do our profile cuts around the outside of those. 
and more sanding. Now that we have those, we're going to pop that wood off. We're going to put on my mystery wood. And here we are pocketing out around those posts. Again, like I mentioned, this was the longest tool path, um, but it was well worth it. It came out really well in the end. And here we go. Look at this. Cutting these um, external threads is really a treat to watch. It works really, really well. The top of that being chamfered off nicely, except for the sound it was making while it was doing it, it was really quite nice. So here I am using your basic Stanley or carpet knife, cutting out two parts to test. Look at that, it worked. Now's the time if it didn't work to go figure out what I'd done wrong, but I knew that with my prototype, everything was happy. Went along and cut out all the parts, put them aside, and then of course you know what's next. Um, more sanding after this. Pretty much the sanding was to get rid of those tabs that I used in there, which was um, which need to be removed and then getting rid of the, the lion's share of any stuff on the edges of them that I wanted to do. There was a bit of hand sanding afterwards, but that's okay. Here we are, this is the three parts. And again, they worked out okay in the end. Went together really nice, everything was great. Organizing my parts here so that I could glue them up properly without too much trouble. Didn't want to have glue on something and didn't have the part available. Now I didn't use any clamps at all. I used totally just finger strength to put them together for a couple seconds while the glue kind of sunk in a little bit. Here I am. Oh, look at that. It worked so well. Fit in there a treat. It was beautiful. Wonderful. You can see me put that in there. You can see the gap that was there. I told you about that, but I didn't, didn't bother me at all. The light fixed really well. I used double-sided um, Velcro to hold it in. And then this is where everything comes together and um, it worked out really, really well, really well. It all fit together nice. And then we have some nice shots here of it in the end, all done and finished. And of course, Anthony had a little fun at the end and made an interesting little animation of it actually working. Huh, which is fun. So, I have two tips that I didn't tell you about during that whole video and um, explanation. The first one was that when you go to actually glue it up, make sure that you have your armature all in the right um, way because the gluing up if you happen to glue the top bit or the bit into the base the wrong way then um, it doesn't work the, your your shade will be the wrong way off your base and that just won't work okay so definitely make sure that you have um, test fitted it and you know the right way it's supposed to be put together now, also like I had said there's a lot of parts to this a lot of parts and um, Cut them all out of the wood, put the thing all together, and then you hold the two side by side, my prototype and the actual finished thing, and you'll notice something is missing. Yeah. We noticed, I went back and dug through the, uh, the bin and found that the piece was still in the material that I had. Oh, yeah. I forgot Be to count careful, it, so I probably should have accounted for all the bits before I glued it together. But in the end, um, I don't think it matters if you put it on or not. It could be there, it could be not be, so I've left it off. So that's all right, I think, in the end. But those are just two good things to remember. Now, for the last little bit, we're gonna try something a little bit different this time around. I'm actually going to show you, from a different camera, the actual finished thing. So here we go, that's it. And we can actually take it apart here and show you how well it works. Let me just loosen that up and move it back. This side here is the actual nut. So I can show you that the inside of that is really nice, worked out really well. Really well. And then if we take off the shade and this here, we have the two parts and they go together really well. Now, like I said, the beauty of this was that I had made it so that I have a little extra room inside of the nut so that when I do tighten it on, it gets on nice and tight and you can pretty much angle this whichever way you want to. And we have it on and off by the little push. So it's a no pretty neat, I think, in the end. So now, 
I hope that you go over to your VNCO account and download this. If you do, I would love to see it created in your own style. There's all kinds of things that you can do with this to make it your own. From changing the shape of the nuts to maybe being um, cogs or gears, like a steampunk kind of look to it, to putting a recess in the bottom for maybe the remote that comes along with the, with the light in the bottom, that would be kind of nice. Or even putting in some 3D content from Design and Make, wink, wink in there as well to kind of make it extra special or even muck around with the way I decided to do the um, the top, okay? If you wanted to, that would be kind of nice too. If you do that, post it socially, make sure you tag us in it so we can see it. Put it in the Vectric forum and, and show it off because you should be pretty proud of projects like these. These are pretty neat to make. Well, I hope you liked that video. I hope that um, you go ahead to your VNCO account and do download that project to take a closer look at it. Um, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to it. If you like the video, I would really appreciate you giving it a little thumbs up. Um, press the little bell if you would like information or you'd like to be um, told when our next event is going to be happening. Um, that would be great. So I guess to finish this up, um, from all of us here at Vectric, I hope you're having fun, hope you're still making, and hope that you're all being really safe out there, okay? We appreciate all you guys do for us, and uh, hey, we can't wait to see you back here again soon, okay? Anyway, thanks so much. See you again.